All right. Welcome, welcome to the Audacious Life Podcast. Today I'm excited because I have Jenna, Jennifer Hervitz Yay. with me. Did I say your name right? You did. You're perfect. You did okay. it perfectly. Yay. I'm so proud of you. That's awesome. Yay. Yay. And so Jennifer is, I want to say, a divorce mm, specialist. Perfect. I love that. <laughs> you, could, you can come up with your own title. That's awesome. But Thank you. I, so d- we met through this conference earlier in the spring. We were just having a little chat about that and how fun that was. <laughs> no. All the interesting things that came out of that. But I remember seeing you and just being so impressed by your energy oh, and your effervescent and right so back. positive. You too. So Jennifer's book that I think you gave it to me that day was One Happy Divorce. That's right. All the bullshit. That hold the bullshit. That's right. One Happy Divorce. And I was like, I got to get her on the podcast. So. <laughs> Yeah, so welcome, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. I appreciate this. I'm, I'm excited. Me too. And so Jennifer has her own podcast. I'm going to give you a super shout out because I was just listening to two of your episodes oh, thank last you. night and they were awesome. Oh, I appreciate it. It's so fun. It's I like really doing it. good. And her podcast is called Doing Divorce Right. That's right. And Because yeah, um, I think you can do it, actually. You, some people can actually do divorce right. It's hard, but it's, you know. Yeah, and I think that's why I wanted to have you on because, you know, a lot of the people that have been on this particular podcast, they're coming out of emotional abuse, financial <sighs> abuse, like, yeah. you know, all these controlling situations, some physical and sexual abuse and things like that as well. And so when you look at those situations, you're like, how mm. can I do divorce right in this scenario? How can I come out of this, you know, feeling empowered, feeling right. like I made some good decisions, feeling like my children or my assets or whatever are, are in a better place because of this decision. So I really wanted to hear. Oh, well, first of all, let me say thank you for having me. That's first. And secondly, um, you know, it's funny when I wrote the book, oh, you know, one happy divorce, hold the bullshit. I think that people were like, oh my God, this girl's crazy because divorce is not happy. And I just want to say that, first of all, I'm not pro divorce at all. I'm pro happy marriage and I'm pro working on your marriage and I'm pro, you know, taking your time and, and going to therapy and seeing if it can work. But if it can't and divorce is, ine- is inevitable and you have to get divorced, I really feel like um, you can do it right if you work at it. And just like you know, being happily married takes a lot of effort and work, being happily divorced is so much work. It is so much effort and it takes two people to do it. And it takes two people to put their egos aside and for the children and say, look at, we're going to do this and we're going to be amicable and we're going to be kind and we're going to be respectful and we're going to just absolutely do this for our kids. And it is not easy. First of all, it is not easy. Right. Right. So, um, you know, and here's the thing, it takes two people. If you have one complete narcissistic piece of crap, you know, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) And the other one is like, I want to do this right. It's not going to work. Okay. And and, and I'm not naive to think that like everyone can be happy and skipping through the tulips and we're going to be a great divorce. It doesn't work that way. Um, So when I wrote this book, I was talking about my happy divorce because I'm lucky and um, people say, well, how did, how did you do this? And I look, this is the true story of it all. Um, I looked at my ex-husband or my husband at the time and I said, "Um, we are miserable. He said, right. And I said, we are like just at the point where this is not working. And he said, absolutely. And I said, look, we can either stay together miserably, um, you know, for the rest of our lives, or we can get divorced and we can do this happily and amicably, 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 I can never say it, (laughs) that word, Um, or you can be stuck with me forever. You know, I said, and that's, that's the end of it. Because if we can't do this the right way, Mm -hmm. you're going to be stuck married to me. (laughs) And then, right. That's it, you know, because I'm not doing this any other way. And he thought I was kidding. And I seriously wasn't. I was like, I'm going to do this the right way. We're going to use a mediator. I'm not giving some dickhead. I'm sorry, am I allowed to say that? Yeah, no, some, go ahead. You know, yeah, some attorney, all my money. Yep. Because our money should stay with our within our family unit, our unfamily mm-hmm. unit. So it goes to our kids eventually. I'm not going to waste our time and our energy fighting, being rude and mean because look, we loved each other once. You know, we did. We respected each other once, even though I can't stand you right now. I can't look at you. I can't even breathe in the same area. But, you know, look, we have to do this the way that, you know, and trust me, was it easy? No, absolutely not. But I looked at my two boys and I said, you know what? They didn't deserve this. They didn't ask for this. Um, And that's kind of what I did. So, wow. 
Well, what so I, I mean, geez, you know, so did you have a lot of people around you who were divorced? So you knew, cause here's no. the thing. No. Cause I think when people are trying really hard just to get out and they want to clear the air, they want to yes. start over and you know, you, you've heard this before from probably many people, like a lot of, a lot of us just throw in the towel. We're like, you know, don't throw in the towel. whatever the heck you want, no, like no, no, keep this, that. keep that. No, 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 don't do that. Right. And then you no. give up so much power don't. because you want your freedom and then you regret it later because you're living in a box on the street. That's my next book. That's my next book. Stephanie. Is it called my living in a box is, on the street? It's called what a coulda shoulda. Like right. the mistake I made doing the divorce. Like, you know, girls, please, men, who, even men, you know, women, do not give up. Do not let go of your entire life just because you want to get out. Um, you know, take your time, do it right, follow the steps. Um, you know, obviously a mediator is great, but call an attorney. I called an attorney before I used a mediator. So I knew exactly what I, you know, you need to know what to do. Don't get screwed. You know, you have to live the rest of your life, you know, the way you have to live it. Your, your lifestyle is going to change. Your life is going to change. Your friends are going to change. Shit. I knew nothing. I mean, I knew nothing. I needed to know more to make, you know, educated choices. Um, I think a lot of us, we're just, we're like, I got to get out of this. Right. Yep. No, 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 no. Take your time. <laughs> you know, well, that's it. And, you know, you just had Roberta Shaler on your yeah, show. I love her. I love yeah. her. Oh, my gosh. She's going to be on this show very, very soon. Yay. It's going to yes. happen. Yes, it is. She's Roberta, awesome. Roberta, come on. She's awesome. And one of the things that I love that she said, which is what I usually say, too, which is just, you know, if you're in physical danger, Mm-hmm. obviously you need to leave. Like there's leave. no question, right. but if you are not, and it's an emotional situation and you're feeling, you know, sleep deprived, depressed, isolated, anxious, like all of that stuff, that's terrible too. Yes. But if you can frame it in such a way to give yourself more time yes. to really heal while you're still there, while you have a roof over your head and all, mm-hmm. everything's intact and think it through, you can come out the other side in a much brighter, better place instead Absolutely. of, com- you know, being broken, leaving broken and becoming more broken because it can actually get worse. Right. And you know what I think also, you know, emotions are so high. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, a lot of times one, one partner has done something so horrific to the other partner, right? And it's not like you're just, you're so, so everything's so heightened. If you can just, I know this sounds so stupid, but if you could just breathe through it. I know mm-hmm. I'm, I try so hard to tell my clients, like if you could just settle in and control what the, at the time, because if you could just, it's like short-term pain for long-term gain, right? Yes. And when you're in the moment, it all seems so horrific. But if and even, this is so, so crazy, but even my ex-husband, when I started to spin out, we were in mediation. I remember, I'll never forget. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know. I, I, what am I going to do? Because I was spinning out like, what is my life going to look like? I'm, I'm mm-hmm. losing everything. You know, my, the vision of my, my white picket fence vision of my life, my family, my, you know, the, the bar mitzvahs together, the weddings together, everything was falling apart. And he had stopped me. And I remember him reaching, could cry thinking about this, mm-hmm. and he was reaching his hand across the table and saying, it's going to be okay. It's Mm going to be okay. And I just didn't feel like anything was going to be okay, you know? Wow. And, um, you know, he said to me, Jennifer, you know, we are going to be okay apart. Yeah. And now we are. But you don't see it. You don't see it, you know? And I got lucky that I had a really good guy um, to divorce. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because I I feel like I've turned the corner with my ex, but I mean, there were moments where, you know, it's a roller coaster. There were moments where he was very con- contrite right. and seemingly willing to do whatever it took to kind of get to the next step. And then again, this is, I think, way more related to his attorney mm-hmm. than his own internal yeah. voice and his own direction. Yeah. He would, the next thing, next time I saw him, he's like Muhammad Ali on the other side, yeah. like put up your dukes. And I feel like I poked the snake and I'm like, where did this come from? We just attorney. had a conversation 24, 48 hours ago and you're like a different person. So well, that's, that's talking. right. And that is why, and I've had a mediator on here before lawyers and mediators, but if you are able to get to a point where you can both talk about number one, the, 
the financial piece yes, of that because you are just throwing money with 15 minute little emails and quick phone calls, even <laughs> all of your children's future, <laughs> your mortgage payments, your whatever. It's gone yep. to this person who has no incentive or very little incentive to get you to a point where you're going to agree. No, they don't so want if you, you can go down they that, keep taking the money. Right. If you go down the mediation path where the whole point of it is to come to an agreement, mm -hmm. right, so then you, you, you can save both the emotional piece. I think it's got to be way lower. I mean, I'm sure okay. it's taking its toll. Believe me, oh, it's yeah. still divorce. It's still oh, it's not pretty. Right. But that versus somebody who's purposely throwing grenades, lighting the fire, kerosene, mm -hmm. like, oh, I mean... Like Right, and they're and they're, they're. You have to remember they're they're separating you. They're pulling you yes. apart. Yes. Oh, totally this divisive. And this and you need, and look, I have nothing against attorneys. Everyone, yeah. I feel like you know, they they serve their purpose, right? But um, they're just not the mediator keeps you centered, right? Exactly. So you're in the room together, and I remember like spinning out, and she'd be like Jen, and she'd look at me, and she'd be like, "What is for both of you? What is we need to get to the center?" And and she just would bring us back and say, nice. and, you know, I tell my clients too a lot of times when you start to fight. And when you start to get aggravated with each other, I use my kids' names. I use my mm. kids' names. So I'll say, you know, uh, if you can talk with the boy, like my boys, I'll be like, well, Jonah did it. Or that. And the minute you say your kids' names out loud, things mm. start to come, start to bring you back to a place where you're not so angry. It starts to bring your anger down because everything should be about your kids. If you have kids, right. everything should be about the boys or the girls or whatever, because it's not about the two of you. You see what I'm saying? Oh, totally. Everything really is about your kids. Yes. So they, and remember, they didn't ask for this. They didn't ask for divorce. They asked for two parents in a house with a dog. And, you know, they right. asked to come into a home with a family, with a mom and a dad. And yep. they didn't ask for divorce. So get your shit together. You know, I tell my, get your shit together. Yeah. Just, yeah. I, no. And I, I totally agree with that. And I can, and I bet if there are people listening right now, if they're like, okay, I'm on board. How do right. I get him on board? Oh. And I, you know, and I don't know. I'm sure. Again, people can go listen to your podcast too, <laughs> <Please> <laughs> to get don't. to get any insight at all on this. But I, and yeah. we both had Jason Lavoy on. Jason That's talked great. about divorce, and he was that divorce yeah. attorney. You know, hoping to probably get people to come to agreement, but really exactly. seeing that his role was more to keep the fight going. Yeah. And so he does divorce coaching and things like that. And he has a really good heart, I think. And yeah, um, he, gets couldn't it. Stand it. he couldn't stand it. He's, and he tells stories. He's like, he uh, just couldn't stand it. He couldn't, it made him sick at night, you know, because yeah, he couldn't sleep. No, he couldn't sleep because of what these people did to each other. You know, it's just yeah. so sad. Yeah. So if you can, just hang in there long enough and slowly just work it through. And again, I, I, I just really think that money mm. for certain personality types over children. I agree. Let's just assume somebody doesn't have a whole boatload of empathy. Yeah, because <laughs> they they there's do. lots of people that don't. Right. So the, and they, the, but most people care about their money and their assets and their reputation. Yep. And so if you can play to those things, yep. those things speak volumes. I mean, people are like, oh, well, I can, I'm going to get divorced. What do you think? Like maybe $30,000? No. How about a hundred thousand right. dollars? How right. about 200,000? I mean, right. I know people who spent a million dollars <sighs> just trying to finalize their divorce. They are like, I never knew I even had a million dollars. And all of a sudden you're still paying bills down. I mean, it's like what it could be your kid's college or your, you know, exactly. trip to whatever, or, oh, just yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Shit. It's crazy. So yeah. I know that this is more about talking about the happy part yeah, happy. done right. So we can focus on that too, but That's I just okay. wanted to get to clear the air yeah. on the stuff again and catering to my own audience here and who the people are who are mostly tuning Whatever. in, you know, they're struggling and they're it's struggling so with yes. people who are kind of just unreasonable a lot of times. But if I it think is. you try to center yourself, mm -hmm. work on yourself, breathe, as you said, I used to tell friends like, and some of the support groups and I'm yeah. like, just breathe it in. Like you're just taking a sip of, of water, like, mm -hmm. like literally drink in the air because your body is starved of oxygen when you're living in that ang anxious place constantly. Yeah. Do you know, um, Laura Lipschitz? Have you heard of her? That name sounds familiar. I don't she's know. On, um, she's going to be in my podcast soon. And okay. she does a whole thing about bitterness mm -hmm. and about how, um, she a toxic, you know, and, and, um, she's divorced too. And she writes for worthy.com and, and, okay. um, pop sugar and she's going to come on and she talks about how you just, you know, 
because she's, you can't, your bitterness will just like eat you alive exactly. and how you can just, um, nothing good comes from being bitter. Mm-hmm. And it, like, you know, your ex is just, you know, gets remarried and has children with this woman and blah, 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 blah. If you can just, it's just so hard to stop being bitter. Right. So, um, if you can emotionally get over that yourself and tune out what, what he's doing, um, mm-hmm. you'll see growth within yourself. And so mm-hmm. it's, it's, it sounds so easy, right? But it's, it's not easy, but it, but it is that simple. Yeah. And that's the difference. It's not easy, right. but it, it, it is that simple. And it sounds so simple, but, and oh, it gosh. does take a while to get there. But I mean, I feel like gone through the ringer and I've come out the other side and I've, yeah. you know, I've been to that very, very dark place. And I think the main thing is you do get to create your life and your right. thoughts create your life. And so if you're giving a lot of thought to fear, anxiety, what could happen, or he did this, or look at his life compared to mine, which is what I was doing. Right. Well, social um, media, social media yeah. is an absolute, it, it's just, you know, they also say, they, they, the, um, you know, don't follow your accent on social media. Shut off the oh, definitely not. Don't yeah. look at what he's doing. Don't compare your life to his. Right. You know, all of that is just negative energy that you're bringing in. Right. Shut that stuff down. Don't, and also friends, friends sometimes, they'll call you up and they'll say, oh my gosh, did you hear the so-and-so guy, you know, your ex-husband? But no, 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 you don't need to hear it. You yeah. know, tell your friends, look, that's great. I'm really happy for, you know, Jim, right. whatever his name is, your ex-husband. But I, if, if I need to hear something, I'll let you know. Yeah, no, exactly. You don't need the gossip or the... No, no, it's all negative. Yeah. It's just really hard. So those boundaries are huge, just building up boundaries. And I think when, um, again, this audience, a lot of people have been isolated. So when they're getting out or thinking about getting out, they're trying to align themselves with the people, you know, and they might not have many people left That's because (laughs) they've been starved. Yeah, a lot of us, right? A lot of, well, now you're in that place too, right? Because, but you're hopefully you're you've been um, kind of pruning yes, and getting yes, rid of the toxic yes, people. Yeah, yeah. And when you're, you've been isolated and you feel like you don't have anybody left, sometimes right. you just got to work with what you have but, right. or get up enough energy and build yourself up enough so that you can start looking for those positive people and those right. and find groups you. and things. Right, exactly. You positivity, you find it. And I have a lot of um, friends who are just so, such in a negative, they're still so hurt mm-hmm. in a negative and they put out negative energy. And even when you start dating, um, oh, yeah. which is what I work with a lot of my dating you know, clients, right, and right. you're like, well, why can't I find anyone? I'm like, well, honey, when you go on a date and you see how much you hate men, <laughs> it's not helping. I don't think that's going to be a real positive thing. They sit at the bar and they're like, oh my God, my last date sucked and he was this, that. And I'm like, oh girl, that's not going to get you anywhere. Um, oh, so, you, know, yeah. you, know, you, put out, you want to put out positive energy so you it binds you, right? You know, obviously, but it's just so it's just so hard. To, divorce sucks. It just freaking sucks. It does, and I there's right. nothing you can do. I mean, it just takes time. You know, it, it just you have to just it just is so it's time. It's just time. Yeah, and taking time to it's get important. to an authentic, positive yes. place, so you're not yes. just like, oh, they're saying I should be positive, and I don't feel no. it. Well. No, take your time, slow down. Don't date if you don't. I mean, oh, like please. take hot baths. Say that again. Salt baths. Say it again, please. Because <laughs> yeah. I did way too soon. Yeah. I, no, biggest mistakes. That's my book too. It's like learn from, please learn from my mistakes. That's why I wrote a book. I'm like, if anyone can read this, um, I wish I had it. I wish I had my books yeah. when I was divorced because getting divorced, I, I was like, I wouldn't listen to anybody. You know, you don't want to listen. You're like, oh no, I know everything. I'm good. I'm good. No, I was not good. <laughs> no, and- no. You know, when you need, you have these needs that are just yeah. visceral and you're like, yes. no, I know that my needs are being met and I know this is what I need right now. Right. And maybe right. you did. And that's why you are where you are. And that's why you're going to write this amazing book for these oh, people who need to hear I your hope. message. You oh, know? God, I hope so. This, this second book I'm writing is going to just, I, it's funny. I'm, I'm nervous to write, to put it out, but I'm like, I think people need, I feel like married women need this book. It's good. Yeah. called the next one is called Woulda, Coulda, Shoulda. Um, nice. A divorce coach's guide to staying married. <laughs> so I think that women need to hear, like, look, guys, it's the grass is not greener on the divorce side of the world. Um, and if I would have known when I was married what I know now, I probably mm-hmm. would have stayed married. I probably would have stayed married. I would have worked right. a little harder. I would have. I do. I think I would have probably, um, you know, taken a little more time to cultivate instead of jumping so quickly. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and you know, Mark and I, we did it together. We chose to get divorced. It was a mutual decision, mutual, yeah. but I think both of us would have thought long and hard. Not that we'd ever right. get back together. Right. I get it. Because we can't and we won't. Yeah. And we're, we're different places now. Sure. But, um, oh God, it is just, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. Well, that's the thing. It's like you, you, again, you just, you want to get out. You want to end the pain. Yes, yes. You cannot. And if you've been doing work in the middle, like I, I have stacks of books and audio books yep. and all kinds of journals and you know, you have the therapy that you did that didn't work. And you're just like, I'm trying so hard. I'm doing everything. And you're just like, done. You're done. Like was, some, you know, and maybe some specific thing happens. You're like straw that broke the camel's yep, back. That was it. Done. Right. hundred percent. But then you look back and you're like, okay, where, what are some things I could have done differently? Right. And I, of course I have way more clarity now about oh, 100%. my weaknesses, my vulnerability, where I caved when I shouldn't yes. have, what I fought for versus yes. a different way to fight for it. Exactly. Right. Um, I, you could write the book with me. It's exactly. I feel yeah. like you're reading, my, you're reading my book right now. This exactly yeah. right. No, and it's. I'm so glad you're writing it. And I have a oh. book. I have two books in my, in the works okay, here in me. my head. I'm going to start. To- I love you. I love you. <laughs> I will. I'll give you a ghost right. I'll write for you. There you go. Cool. Seriously, no, it's it's yeah. It's. I just think the clarity that you get over yeah. time is amazing. And I think that what's great is that we can hopefully steer others. Yes, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that I can In a help. better place. Yeah, because I know women, um, all women contemplate. They, you, you think sometime in your marriage, you have thought in your 10 years, 20 years, 15, five, seven year itch, I got to get out of here. And yeah. I just am like, no, 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 no. I'm like, because I hear my friends and they're like, I swear to God, I'm not going to make it. I'm like, no, 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 no. You will. Trust me, you are right. staying married. Like I've said to my girlfriends in the last, you know, five years, you will stay married because this sucks. <laughs> so this right. book is like, I just want to hand it to everyone and be like, you will stay. I want to save like all the marriages I can right. <laughs> because it's just, you know, I know. So and I, everybody else is. And I think uh, you probably have talked to a lot of women who've been betrayed by their husbands. Oh, and, God, yes. Right. So that to me seems to be with yeah. the women that I've met, the one thing that is the hardest thing Absolutely. to forgive and move on, Absolutely. but then and and even let go of after the fact. I don't know how. Yeah, and, um, and I don't know what different to say about too. that. You know what? That's it. I started my book. The next one was like, look, this book is not for people who are in abusive relationships. This book is not for women whose husbands have come home and said, "I'm done. I'm in love with someone else." Mm-hmm. The book is not for because those are situations that look at you're not staying in a marriage. Where right. your right. man has come home and said, "Look, at I'm sleeping with my secretary, and I'm in love, and we are, she's pregnant." You're not staying in that marriage. I'm not naive right. enough to say that's a marriage you're staying in. You know, right. I'm not letting I'm not letting my best friend. If she comes to me and says my husband is on drugs and whatever, stay in that marriage. No, no, no. no. Right. My book is for women who are like, oh my god, you know, I'm not in love anymore. He the, the, the garage opens up at the end of the day, and my heart doesn't beat. Really, honey. You know, he's my best friend, but we don't have great sex anymore. Really? Okay. Those are the marriages I'm talking about, you know? Right. Those are the marriages. The marriages that like the, you know, I'm sitting at lunch with my girlfriends and they're all like bitching me because he doesn't bring home dinner anymore. Or, you know, God, he just, he doesn't help throw the laundry and I'm just really sick of him. And I'm like, you know, I, I could use a real great, you know, lay next week. Those are the marriages. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like the ones that are like, they're crabby. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No. And you know. They're feeling that way for a reason, but yeah. you know, you're right though. Like the, yes. if only they could experience yes. what's on the other side of that. <laughs> yes. Right. Oh and goodness. then they'll be like, oh my God, oh my what can goodness. I do? Right. Like, to, oh my gosh, it's okay. You know, like, yes. Right. I to turn there. the other cheek, to accept, to, yes. to, to, and appreciate. when I say accept, like appreciate smaller appreciate. things, like look for yes. some goodness. We're so, we get so stuck looking for what they didn't do right. Yes. Cause right? I didn't. And, and I remember sitting yeah. there. I emasculated him. I was rude. I was mm-hmm. bitchy. I was mean. But you know what? I was, it was warranted in certain, you know, he was the same. It was like a sick, like, yeah. you know, he would come home and be a man. And I was, I was raising two kids and they were throwing up yeah. on me and blah, blah, And I was yeah. bitchy, but he was also, so it was, of course, you know, but. It's every, everybody, yeah. Right. It's every, but okay. it's all my, all my, you know. But. I actually have moments where I laugh because I see I'm in his shoes now because I've got the roof over our head. I'm yes. paying for it. And I'm only renting. I can't even imagine right now. I mean, I'm, oh, I'm excited no. to own a house again. No, but don't ever buy a house. That's a big <laughs> chapter two. That's chapter two. Oh, a condo. How about that? A condo. <laughs> but but I'm but I'm I'm like 
you know, now I'm working for myself. He always worked for himself. And I had, I had the, I worked at MIT for like 13 years. So I had the stable job, the benefits, all that for our family. And then he had the, you know, unknown fluctuating income. And it was great a lot of times, but it was, it fluctuated. And he would say to me, you know, you just don't understand. I'm, you know, I have to block stuff out. I'm working without a net. And I'm like, and I would get mad because I wanted him to be more financially responsible. But now I'm like, yeah, sometimes you do have to just block it out right, and just like, trudge forward it, right? and like, not not get fearful or not be like that person who's the financial planner or whatever. Like life isn't always like that. I know. Isn't it funny? So I have way more it? empathy for him. I, I literally have said to him a couple of times, I'm like, listen, <laughs> dude. It's okay. I get it. I get it. I get I mean, it. I've apologized to Mark. I've actually applied. He is too to me. Like, I'm like, Mark, I'm so sorry that I didn't appreciate you. Or I'm like, I'm so sorry that I yelled at you for putting the dishes right. in the dishwasher the wrong way. What was I thinking? Like, there are right. things I'm like, what the fuck? I, you know, I don't yeah. blame myself for the bills, you know, what I, and he doesn't blame himself, but we both are like, oh my God, we were so, but you know, five years out of our marriage, you have clarity. Right. Exactly. So I feel like if I could just take my clarity, put it in a book and hand it to everybody else, I could save like a zillion marriages. You I know? know. And so here's the thing I want to say though. This is yes. totally legit because again, my audience mainly, <laughs> a lot of them have yes. legit control yes, of and course, these issues. Of course, so I please, don't yes, want to yes. steam all over that. But so what don't I want to say it, is right? that you are in a very real place mentally, emotionally, and physically. Yes. Like I know I, I probably didn't even sleep for eight years. I didn't, right. Of course, <laughs> I, I was exactly. The cycle of anxiety, like all of this stuff Me going too. on. So I don't want to diminish that, but what, what you and I think are both here to say is that when you when you do get better and everything clears, yes. you have this very different perspective looking back. So if you can find a way to get yourself to a better place yes. emotionally, yes. physically, mentally, yes. Yes. and gain more perspective, it will, if nothing else, give you more time yes. to make a better exit where it's yes. not messy and exactly. whatever. Again, if you're not being hurt yeah, physically, yes. sexually, I'm like all that. that. Right. I'm not saying staying in a bed. So please right. don't stay right. in a bad marriage. Please God. No, that's right. not my, that's not what I'm saying at all. Thank you. That's but the, yeah, but, but whatever you can do. And again, I have multiple episodes about different ways for self care. I'm sure you do too. So many things you can do. And it's about knowing that you deserve. And so does he deserve the time that it takes for you to get yourself to a better place. It's going to affect you. It's going to affect your kids. You're like everybody around you when you start to own that. Right. And you don't want your kids in a, in an unhealthy marriage. You also don't want your kids to see you not in love. I mean, that was our biggest thing too. Like I wanted my kids to see me be in love and have fireworks and have, you know, us touch and love and feel, and we weren't, we weren't there. Um, so now my boys see me in a relationship. I've been in a relationship for two years where we're batshit crazy in love, you know? So, and that's, and they see my ex-husband in love. So that's what they need to see. Um, which is also positive too. So I'm not saying at all to say in a marriage that is not healthy, but um, right. you know, I can help a couple. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that. Yeah. I'm so glad that you were here to to talk Me about that. And the, you know, we need to wrap this up in a minute. But I one know. thing we were going to talk about, oh, yeah, yeah. and maybe you can come back. But I wanted you to say to a, a little bit just about the whole dating after divorce oh, piece. God. I'm like, oh God. I I'll guess you can't really we'll wrap that, that up. And <laughs> yeah, no, it's awful. It sucks. No, yeah. Um, I can definitely come back or you can come on my show. Um, yeah, yeah. I, um, dating's hard. It's totally different than when we were younger, right? I mean, the whole online thing is a nightmare. Um, yeah. I have on my website, I have all kinds of information about dating and um, six steps to online dating after divorce, um, a whole thing about it. And you can, it's all free on my website. If you want to go grab it, I have videos and all that good stuff. Dating is a nightmare. Um, but you know, match.com, there's all kinds of great sites. They're not as bad as everyone thinks they are. If you do them right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there's a method to the madness. I think online dating profiles are super important. How you write them out there. It's it's really important. Um, Mm -hmm. I actually help people write theirs. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. So, because I'm a writer and I kind of know what to do. You have a knack. Um, yeah. Yeah. I have a knack for making you sound really good. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think they're, 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 you know, it's not as, it's not as horrible as people make it out to be. If you, if you take some time and energy, find the right sites, do the right thing and um, weed out the bad ones, okay. weed out the bad guys quickly and I can help you. But, um, 
if anyone needs any help. Yeah, yeah. we'll have to do another episode about that. I, I would to. love to be on your podcast. To. Come on. <laughs> Do a link. I would love to have you. We'll yeah, that w- and people would love to know how to like. Yeah, you're oh, so good. I would love to have you. Thank you. Well, I feel like that has become an art for me, an art form, because I. Everybody listening knows this, but I, I had, I literally almost checked myself in, like to like some kind of a mental thing, like okay, over, it was over a year ago. But no, holy you. cow, yeah, lots we'll going on you. with my kids and stuff. So, okay. well, we'll have you on. And you'll talk about self care and yeah. take care of yourself. And, it matters. I, could use you. I could use some self care. Oh, thank you. Think of a little. Yeah. So, <laughs> if people are, you know, this is the thing. Like the theme of this is divorce done right and yeah, yeah. happiness after divorce. So, yeah. if you are dating, though, we, I feel like I shortchanged people a little bit. Go to your website. So, oh, what's okay. the URL for your website? Oh, it's, it's jenniferherbits.com. It's jenniferherbits.com. It's and Jennifer you have com. six steps to dating after it's divorce. Six steps to online dating success okay. after success. divorce. Yes. I like the word success in there. Yes, yeah. Success. Yes. Yes. Because that's yeah. There's a lot I of help. I can actually needed. give you the link if you want, and you can just we can put, put it in the show notes. Sure, yeah, and then absolutely. people can just get it. It's free and it's fun and it's not cute. So awesome. Yeah, thank well, you. Well, this for was super me. helpful. Your oh, breath of fresh air, Jennifer. You are too. You are too. It's fun. So glad to have you on. Thank I'm you just gonna me. stop. <laughs>